She's here with two of her sons. Let me stand up now. She's not the pastor's wife, oh. She's the pastor herself in Canada. God bless you, mommy. We love you. Thank you. But she's on vacation. She said, I don't want to do anything. Let me just come and worship with you. Mommy, we love you. God bless you, ma. I can, may I be on stage this morning? Renowned, I don't have his profile here, but he's renowned expert. Pastor Praise, let me call you Pastor. Hmm. Did you remember the program we had at at uh, Unilag. Pastor, she organized a program. We have been married for 13 years now. Maybe 12 years ago. We were young, about 12 years ago. We invited him to talk about marriage. And he taught me one bad thing. I don't know if I just say it. Ah, he taught me one bad thing. What oh, was the bad thing he taught me? He said, why do that was talking to married women. I was young, but I was a virgin when I got married. SU. They taught us, meet your husband. I will meet him, normal. He said, What are the prostitutes doing to the men? What are the men looking for outside that we, the wives, cannot give them? That can we start behaving like prostitutes with our husband, like our lot? Then we will see if we will not keep them. I see the button now. So I started doing that a lot too. For that deal. Yeah, and that changed a lot of perspective. Because I was young. I got married at 28, so you can understand. 28. So, and I was pure sister. I was doing well in my own eyes. But if I was not careful, um, I would just have continued that way. Meanwhile, the brother... You no, know, was brother Shei too. And that is the way he will not also ask for some things because also a brother. So I don't see it as sin. And he was able to unveil sex for us. Like it's not sinful. Can you imagine? Just so it's fine. Okay. Praise the Lord. So this morning, let me bring on stage our own coach. Praise for Owe. I need a second mic, please. Please prepare your question around parenting, what you have heard yesterday, if you are not here yesterday, what you may want to ask. But before I go ahead with the questions I have, please let me give the floor to Chris. Good morning, church. Good morning. How many of you were around yesterday? I hope you were blessed. Okay, so we're doing talk show because we don't want information overload. Because I could teach you on family for the next one month there about. I mean, it's something I've done for 19 years of my life and um, there's a lot to teach. But oftentimes, we also need to hear from you so that we can narrow down on specific issues. But let me say this, that the most important nation on earth is your family. Because your family is the pr production factor of the society. If we want to heal Nigeria, we got to heal the family. Which is why you will notice that I focus a lot of our, on our men because a cultural man is dangerous to the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God is culture. Now, the culture that we were born with, the Igbo culture, Yoruba culture, contradicts the kingdom of God's culture. So when you are born again, you need to become a kingdom man, which is why in our kingdom, he that seeks to be the leader, let him be the servant of all. So you can't be a husband in the kingdom without being the servant of your family. So you can't be a husband who just sits down and press remote control and command everyone. No, your role is to create an enabling environment where everyone's potential can find expression. Which is why you notice that everyone that came into the circle of Jesus, he made them better. So invariably, your wife should be better than you. That's why you are called the bridegroom, which means the groomer of the bride. So you are, you, are, you must be a world-class coach of a world-class player. And don't be insecure. Don't worry. Your wife, whenever she goes, wherever she manifests, she's gone in your name. A true test of your character, of your grooming ability, is a transformed woman who can manifest at the highest level. So I believe that today, right, you will transform your life and transform our nation. Nigeria is the way it is because we have held onto cultures that has not helped us. And I was quoting from the scripture yesterday. The Bible says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by uninstalling your self-sabotaging patterns. So there are those self-sabotaging patterns, what your father taught you, what your grandfather taught you, which has not benefited us. We need to get to the kingdom culture. 
And when we understand the kingdom culture, we produce a better society, ultimately a better nation, and ultimately a better world. So it's so good to be with you. I must appreciate your pastor and um, your pastor misses there. Both my friends, I mean, we've come a long way, and I want to appreciate I've had a fantastic time with your protocol team. Everyone, the music department, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So I have one of the questions I have. It has to do with father-son relationship. Okay. Um, it's common. This question came from somebody, and the person said, which I could also relate with because I also have, I have two boys and two girls. My husband tends to bond more with the girls than the boys. So what measures do we put in place to ensure father-son relationships? Some of our boys are not mentored. Okay, um, you know, I said yesterday that parenting is discipleship. And discipleship starts with modeling. Now, um, if you look at the book of Proverbs, it was a father-to-son relationship that produced that book. It was David's relationship and mentoring of Solomon that produced that book. So um, many of us... Like I, the scripture I quoted, talking about self-sabotaging pattern. There was a self-sabotaging pattern that was installed in African men, which makes us appear more like Amadioa and Shongo to our family than Jesus Christ, right? So we, we revel, we pride ourselves in the fact that I'm a no-nonsense man, you know. So when I was growing up, um, if you had to go and talk to my father, you needed to do sign of the cross and pray and commit God's his heart into God's end because you didn't know what to get. Now, that's no longer a love relationship. You know, I never saw my father hug my mom. Um, he only hugged my mom once a year that I saw. And that's usually when we cross over from 31st of December to 1st of January. The last time you would see, and it's usually about 10 seconds transaction. So I was brought up to see that consistently. So how was I supposed to be romantic? How was I supposed as a man to learn how to give flowers to a woman, to take a woman out? I never saw my father do that. So by observing my father, I had become unconsciously competent like Amadioha, like Shongo, like Ogo you know and this is that is why when you see us talk about god when we talk about a loving god it doesn't move us as africans but when you talk about unkillable killer you know the person that uh, the one that has fire you see how us flex our muscle because that's what has been installed in us but we need to uninstall that soft self-sabotaging software and understand that as a father i mean the best way to look at it is to read the lord's prayer our father right that talks about his identity who art in heaven that talks about his domain Hallowed be your name. That talks about the integrity of his name. Thy kingdom come. That talks about his influence. Thy will be done on earth. That talks about purpose. As it is in heaven, give us this day. That talks about provision. Our daily, you know. So you can go on and on and on and on. And if you look at it, it was actually a romantic um, song between David and his God. So you must not be a Madio and Shongo that your children cannot, you know, approach. I remember... I had to do a lot of work, you know, to bond with my children because the moment your children can tell you everything about themselves, it will become very difficult for the external culture to influence them. There is nothing you tell my son that is not going to tell me, you know. So from the time he was a child, I ensured that I was responsible for school runs. I was the one who, you know, there were times in Lagos I had to put him around me and drive with him. I will take him to crutch, take him back, which is why my office, I closed at 3 o'clock because that's school runs time. I have to go pick him. So we are bonded over time. I turned my system room to a, a, a football pitch where we shoot ball together. You know, when he started learning music, I will sit with him. You know, I will help him understand. I will give him scores. I will praise him. I will do all kinds of things. You know, because when you bond with your son, right, your son begins to become like you. And when your son becomes like you, your son will be a blessing to his world. Which was why I was sharing yesterday that I didn't teach my son to wash his plate after eating. He was born to meet me washing my plates after eating. So naturally, he believes that that's what human beings do. I didn't teach him to cook as a man. In my house when he was born, his reality was men and women cook. So he doesn't understand that it's women's job to cook. He doesn't know. The first time he understood it, I mean, he knew about it, was a social studies textbook when he was in primary three or four, which, which the author put there that daddy's job is to go to work, mommy's job is to cook, you know, and he had to fight them in school to say this is not right, you know. So what you need to do is to first of all transform yourself and move from a madior like leadership to Jesus Christ kind of leadership where he had disciples who will recline, you know, at his chest. He had people, the children could come near him. If you are a father and your children cannot come near you, you are not a father. 
because the tenet of fatherhood is actually source 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 the one from whom the origin from which source flows from that's what you are so if the source is flowing from you and they can't return to you you have lost the fatherhood what you have become is um you know a military ruler and it starts from your relationship with your wife if you are not the kind of man who can talk to your wife with grace your children will not bond with you in fact the distance between son and father most times is because your son is rebelling against the way you are treating his mother that is why he bonds with his mother because he believes that you are a wicked man for to, for you to talk to his mother and the mother doesn't have a say so his reality is shocking to him to say what kind of man is this unfortunately because unconsciously you are installing that soft pattern so i'm sabotaging pattern in him when he grows up he will most likely become like you right which is why we need to do a lot of work our father's pattern, grandfather's pattern did not help us, which is why Africa is still undeveloped, right? If you have to become a developed continent, our men have to transit what they call the culture that has held us bound and embrace the kingdom culture. And once you do that, you know that your child is the savior of the world. There's a solution he has been brought here to come and solve. So it's not just a child. I mean, I, 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 because I ask, why do we want to have children? A lot of people just want to have children because they believe, them, especially a male child, because they believe that there must be someone to carry on their name. That's, that's a very, very vain and um, a very, very weak reason to have a child. A child is here because it's a solution to a problem. Your role is to help your child and groom him to become the best he can be. How do you groom him? You don't groom him in absentia. You need to be there. Open day, sports day, um, when you come back from work, he needs to have time with you. Once you begin to create that bonding, by the time your child eats the teenage years, he will talk to you about his girlfriend. He will talk to you about the girl when he's having a crush on a lady. He will talk to you about anything and everything. My son tells me, you know, um, one day a lady wrote a love letter to him at school, you know, and he said to me, he said, Dad, this lady wrote a letter. What do you think about it? We could talk about anything. Now, I couldn't have that relationship with my father, conversation with my father. Who born you? You know, that you go and meet my father, that a lady wrote. I mean, my father will take you to school and beat you in front of the assembly, you know. But we need to step it down a little bit, right? and observe and once you observe you begin to bond with your children once you do that right your children will be close enough to you but remember it starts with your relationship with your wife if your relationship with your wife is not a friend relationship it's not a team-based relationship your children will also be a part and it would also show in their own relationship thank you thank you that was a wonderful one thank you very much for that I have two questions there that I'm thinking of taking them together. Okay. I, I want to believe some people can relate with this. Some families are challenged such that father, mother, son, daughter live in one room. And you talk about sexuality and all. How should we teach and practice sexuality in such a, an environment? And the second question is, is it okay for the father to bait the daughter? Um... Mm. you are living in one room trust God for expansion that's the first thing I will say to you I do not believe that God's will is for you to live in one room with two children or three children no um, trust God at least for a room and a parlor or a flat and what I realize is this whatever you believe is what happens to you when I was going to get married I didn't really have so much money in fact I didn't have money to rent a flat but I told myself that the first house I will live as a married man will be a three-bedroom apartment. I said, I will not do a two-bedroom. Now, you imagine you don't have money, but you are, you are, you are also choosy, right? And, and why did I want a three-bedroom? Because I always wanted a library in my house. Um, you know, my study where I, could, where, where I could put books. You know, so I was talking to my mentor, and I, he said, Praise, what kind of house are you looking for? I said, three-bedroom. Um, so he said to me, he said, Praise, you know that the same faith it takes you to get a duplex is the same faith it takes you to get a one-room room. He said, so don't waste your faith. And that was it. I got my house um, in a Jashatel three-bedroom. So when I met the landlord, the day I was going to meet him, I only had money for one year, right? Usually landlords will collect two years. So when I met him, and, I, and he was like, um, what, what do you have? I said, I have money for one year. That my boss is going to pay me the one for the next year, and if you can give me some time. And he said, who is your boss? And I said, my boss is the richest man in Nigeria. I know my boss is the richest man around. That was what I said. I was talking about God. He thought I was talking about Dangote. You know, ah, he said, wow, I am so privileged to have, you know, somebody that works with Dangote in my house. I didn't respond 
You know, that was how he gave me the house. Right? It's about your faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith is the assurance of things so far, the evidence of things not seen. You are in one room room because you enjoy the one room room. The day you say enough is enough, I want something better than this, you will get it. I am a testimony. It has worked consistently. Right? Now, if your reality, however, is one room room, then you need to pace your sexual sexuality time with your wife. Right? Maybe when your children go to school, you have to now come back home early or you know you need to time it yeah you know um you need to find a way to do it um because you cannot be having sex in your with your children in the room thinking they are sleeping children don't sleep they are watching free movie right um so you need to there's what we call personal space which you need to begin to teach um what to teach your children about sex is not something i can get into um i think we have materials at the back you know that you, what you can teach about sex from 18 months to 18 years you know i've done all kinds of work over the years on that um some of the videos have gone viral so you can get them you know but you need to teach your children about sex now coming to the second question which is um father baiting the daughter it's not there is no hard and fast rule um the, if you as a father you see your daughter's nakedness and you have an erection something has gone wrong with you that's the truth um can i bet my daughter yes i can bet my daughter even though she has outgrown the age where she needs assistance now i mean my daughter is um, going to be eight in september so but before age four i was bathing my daughter you know i bet my son but at age four, I had to teach them how to wash themselves properly. You know, because that's the age where you exit and you observe and supervise them till the mass tight. Right? It's not because anything is going to happen. You know, because there are so many rules up and down, so many nails of fear. Because it's, um, people are, some people are doing doesn't mean everyone is going to do it. Because the worst that can happen to your marriage is when you as a wife now become suspicious of your husband. That your husband is beating your daughter and is going to sleep with your daughter. Now once the devil can plant that seed of um, suspicion into your mind, is about to destroy your home. You know, so as a man, um, if you think you are not up to it, it's fine. Just opt out. But for me, it's not a big deal. My daughter is my daughter. I can bathe my daughter, you know, but I would not do it at this stage because I've already taught her how to bathe herself. But when she was still um, at the age where she couldn't do it, I mean, because when I got married, my after about one year and a half years, my wife had to go and do masters in the UK, right? And so I was here alone with my son. I was the one that took care of him. You know, it's not a big deal. Um, so it's not yes or no. It's about who you are and what you have put as the rules in your family. But I don't think it's any problem at all if you have to bathe your daughter. Okay, let me open the floor. To, let me open questions to any of us. So the mic is going round. Please make it short and simple, not a contribution. Go straight to your question so we can maximize the time. Good morning. Okay, they need to put it on. Yes. Right. Good morning, sir. Yeah. So my question is, how do you heal from your parents in with respect to communication? How do you heal from your parents with respect to communication? So okay. this is an instance. You know, there are, there are points in life where you need parents, like where you need them in your communication, yeah. where you need them to talk, where you need them to give you some direction. And during those moments, they were not there. Yeah. Like they were always like shutting you up, not giving you attention. And these things, you try to find it out yourself. So when you don't need them, they now tend to now come in and like, okay, I'm here. And you don't need them in that respect. That space again. Yes. Okay, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, why did your parents behave that way? Because never forget that hurting people hurt other people. Your parents cannot hurt beyond what they know per time right so how were they socialized my father was like that my father never sat me down until he was 60. that was when he tried getting close but i was out of the house but when i began to ask him one day why he was like that my father told me his past and i understood perfectly why he was like that you know people do the best they can with what they know if your parents knew better they will act better right but you need to not focus on what they didn't do can you focus on what they did they provided shelter right all true they fed you right they paid school fees so why have we chosen to focus on their area of weakness which they had no control over right never forget that they grew up in a generation where a father you must be tough you must give instruction you can't even sit with children right so we need to excuse them for their failures 
and let the good they have done count for them against the failure because if you place what they have done right versus what they have done wrong what they have done right far outweighs what they have done in fact what you call wickedness is their way of protecting you even though they didn't know how to do it better right which is why our generation must be an improvement on their generation the problem will be when you now begin to do what they're doing right so don't say you don't now need them because you will always need them right because there was a time that you didn't know yourself there was a time you couldn't even pronounce your name there was a time you know um that you couldn't even feed yourself somebody fed you somebody was there for you right there was a time when you were born somebody took you to the hospital and ensured that you came out alive right they took responsibility in, at those times when you didn't even know whether you would survive or you wouldn't there was a time you were sick that they had to rush you to the hospital they borrowed money to pay hospital fee bill they didn't tell you that story right so don't you didn't just arrive here by yourself as if you jumped down from heaven there was a period in your life that the lost years that you can't remember they were there for you so and those the times they were there for you was what laid the foundation for the awareness you now have imagine they didn't send you to school to go and read and write you won't be able to read the books that you now read that gave you enlightenment so the, everything you say you become there is still their fingerprint in between it so let that good speak for them against the evil you can see and that my way God. you can heal i'm just remembering my mom i need to give her a call Oh, that's a nice response. Thank you so much. Yeah. More questions? Okay. Praise the Lord, Church. Hallelujah. Okay, my question goes like this. I've always been scared because I have more of girls in the house. I've been thinking of how to raise these girls. When it gets to that teenage stage where they feel they are grown-up girls, like from 16, 17, they tend to get closer to the boys. How do you manage this stage? So they, bring this like, so, they don't, so, so, so that they don't do what? So they won't bring this disgrace to you like... What is disgrace? What is okay, what I'm trying to say is... You, you see them getting closer more to the boys. Yes. Keeping boyfriends Which and is fine. Rest. Okay, how do you manage so it don't get to another level? What is another level? Of sexual intercourse. Next level. Yes. <laughs> okay, um... Let me first say that you need to banish your fear because what you fear the most is what you will attract. You are a prophet as a parent. You are a seer. What you see is what becomes your reality. So you need to change your vision and see your children turning out right. Right? Many of us made mistakes in our teenage years. We didn't die, we bounced back. So don't be afraid of failures or mistakes. Failure is simply a feedback. What you need to however do is raise your children with their esteem intact. Once a child's esteem is intact, it's very tough. I mean, the boys who your children get close to and they tell them funny, funny stories, if you look at a girl and you say to the girl, you are a beautiful girl, and she begins to blush, it's actually a feedback that the parents have not been telling her she's beautiful. Because if you have given her overdose of your beautiful, especially from the father, what the guy, what will take the guy to get her off her feet will be what the father has not said right now you also need to create an enabling environment where your children can be honest so if your daughter begins to say mommy i'm having a crush on a guy don't shout don't scream tell her to invite the guy home i mean i have a young lady who lives in my house and um so i mean i was talking to her about you know a guy she said that ah, there's a guy that is asking out i mean she's even above teenage years you know and um, so i said to her tell the guy to come and visit you at home that i want to see him so the moment she told the guy the guy said no that i cannot come that uh, how can she come to that? That if it was she was living alone, he would have come. So I told her that's already red flag, right? Because if he's confident of himself and he has no hidden agenda, he won't have a problem coming, right? So you need to create that environment where if they have friends, they can bring the friends home and you can see who they are and question them. But above all, when you have totally, you see, I said yesterday that parenting is an 18 year curriculum. What happens from age 19 is your report card. If you have properly discipled your child, I said, disciple a child as a positive terrorist, that when it's time to blow up himself, he does not change his mind. If you have done the proper thing from age one to age 18, you don't have to worry about your children. You can take them to any nation of the world. They will survive. The problem is we do a shoddy job because we don't even know what, how to parent. I mean, the way to parent is the way they are raising terrorists. When you raise a terrorist and he gets to the market and he sees a fine girl, does he change his mind and he doesn't blow up himself? No, he will still blow up himself. So you need to worry about your knowledge on parenting 
and the information you are giving to your children and how you are raising them and the modeling that you are presenting, the example you and your husband are presenting. Because many of us lie to our children. Every parent tells the children, when I was your mate, I was coming first. Can you produce a report card? We lie. And these children know that we lie. Then you need to understand the developmental stages in your, li- in your children's life. Because once your child becomes a teenager, you don't impose your will on teenagers. You, di- you discuss with, a teen- with teenagers and you balance their perspective. So if a teenager asks me, uh, Mr. Praise, can you talk to me about sex? I will ask him, what do you know about sex? I want to know what you know. Right? But parents forget that at teenage years, your child has grown. You still see them with the eyes of that toddler who was running around and you impose your will. Thou shall not do this as long as a man. And once you do that, they will find a way to go and touch the fruit that you say they should not touch. That happened in the Garden of Eden. So you must become your children's friend, especially in their teenage years. Once you are the kind of parents who can discuss anything and everything with them, before the, the boy on the street comes, and makes a demand on their... For, for example, I taught some teenagers, you know, and they made it through their teenagers as virgins. Because I taught them about sexuality. You know, when we were discussing sex, I, I mean, I said to the, oh, oh, her, that see, if you have sex, who gets pregnant, boy or girl? If you go through um, abortion, who goes through uh, abortion, boy or girl? If someone dies during abortion, who dies, boy or girl? If there is no death, there are complications, someone loses a womb, who loses a womb, boy or girl? If there is no abortion, someone drops out of school because of pregnancy, who drops, boy or girl? If someone gives birth and, and begins to fry body and who does a boy or girl? If the society will stigmatize someone and say after one baby mama, who does stigmatize boy or girl? Who is, who is the fool, boy or girl? Who should be wise, boy or girl? So I tell my girls, wise up and close up. And if any guy comes around you to tell you that, prove your love to me by sleeping with me. Tell the guy also to go naked around the street for your sake to prove his love. Guys don't have monopoly over, over, over proposal. You can also propose. Right? If you want me to prove my love, why should I be the one to prove my love? What are you going to put on down to prove your love? Walk naked. Show me that you are in love with me. Then we can talk. Or go and ask my parents for permission to sleep with me. But if you don't have a good relationship with your children, they can't communicate at that level because what happens with many of us, by the time our children are getting into teenage years, they are already an embodiment of low self-esteem which we had imposed on them. Because if you have not treated your daughter like a queen, right, if the guy next to talks to her as a queen, she will believe the guy more than you. Which is why I taught them about perceptual code yesterday. Go and get the message of yesterday. If you learn about perceptual code, you correct your child based on their perceptual code, which is why you can't be treating your children like criminal. So you slap the girl. You slap all the time. You know, she's talking to a guy. You say, ha, ha, ha. That's how somebody got pregnant like that. Oh. You know, if you are talking like that, you are accusing her. You are becoming the accuser of your daughter. Now, if you are the accuser of your daughter, when she finds an environment that doesn't accuse that celebrates our individuality, if it's from a guy, she will give anything to stay in that environment. So you create the right environment, create the right template, raise a girl with sound service team, and you won't worry whether she'll have to sleep around or not. That's, uh, that's to pick something you mentioned about training. We as parents need to be trained. So it's not just about our children. We as parents, when they ask us questions, how should we respond? How are we going to guide them? Generation, I mean, our generation is far from their generation. We're in the knowledge, yeah. the information system, knowledge age, where they also have access to internet. Tell them something, they will check it up on Google. Yeah. So if you are lying, they will confirm it. So, I mean, I was thought like, if you touch a man, to be pregnant. Yeah, they will go and check it. What does it mean to get pregnant? Whereas you have told them a lie. So there's nothing you want to say again. So you can't use the lying system. To get them, we need knowledge, you need to be trained, and thank God for programs like this. I also gone for a lot on, I mean, I'm into teenage ministry, I also teach children, so I've gone for training. I'm still going, I'm still yearning for more. Please, let's do that as mothers, as fathers, as youth. Understand them, go for training, it will help us to be able to help these children. Thank you very much for that. Another question, okay? Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, yesterday, sir, you were speaking about um, people that come from different backgrounds, disciplinarian and um, domestic. The people that were from disciplinarian family. Discipline and domestication. Domestic. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, and I was among people that actually raised my hand as it, um, from a family where there is discipline. Okay. In fact, I have a scar to prove that discipline. 
on my body. A scar. Yes. That's domestication. Domesticated. No, like discipline. That's, okay. that's domestication. All right. That's you domestication. Body discipline, but if you have a scar in your body, that's domestication. Because I don't know. He actually used to use both of them. Anyway, so my question is yesterday, you know, I got home and I went to meet my daughter. Uh, one of my girls said, okay, she sports my child and she started crying. Ah, like, scared because I usually beat her whenever she does anything wrong. Okay? So, when she was crying, I said, no, mommy, I'm not going to beat you. She said, why? I said, okay, I want to apologize to you for beating you all this well. She actually asked me, mommy, are you okay? A five-year-old girl. She actually asked me, Fuluki, are you okay? I said, yes, I'm okay, but I just feel that I'm not supposed to beat you all the time. So, most of the time, I don't take her to places because of her attitude. So, but while you were teaching us yesterday, I had an insight that some children are very, very free. So, my question is, how do I manage her when I'm not there? That nobody will actually inflict violence or beat her for being free. Why will they beat her in your absence? Because you said there are some children that when you talk to them, and you're like, okay, do this, and she's like, no. So, my daughter is someone that has a mind of her own. So, I said yesterday that you can create your child's user's manual. My children are not in the country, but their user's manual is where they are. You know, when they go into school, my wife shows their teachers and says, this is their user's manual. This is how to correct this kind of children. This is who my children are. They are not like every other child. So you need to create your child's user's manual, and you need to model it. I love what happened to you because all the time that I run trainings, this has been the recurrent testimony. Because parents go back home and they go and practice what I've taught, and their children are touching them. They say, Mommy, are you okay? Are you okay? What's wrong with you? You have not beaten us in two weeks, right? Because we always, we have become, so you can see a five-year-old can recognize that something has gone wrong with you, you know, because you have been beaten. You know, beating her. Some of us, we curse. We become shekwenias. That's what we call, you know, instead of millionaires, we call, you curse your children. You know, then you now think, say the children are doing, going badly. You know, so what you need to do, create a perceptual code. All my domestic selves, they know my children perceptual code, which is why if you slap my child, you can be fired for it without apologies because you have violated our perceptual code of the child. My children are royalties. There is a way to correct royalties. If you don't know it, then we don't have a space for you, right? So you need to create a perceptual code and tell everyone around you that when my child does this, and you see, your five-year-old, what he has done is age-appropriate, right? Expected behavior is why we, we are beating them. You know, if she's spoiling a child, even you as an adult, sometimes you spoil your child. Do you beat yourself? So if you don't beat yourself, why do you think it's beating that resolves the problem, right? Maybe the child is just trying to explore to say what is in the charger, right? But you call it destructiveness. Meanwhile, it's not destructive. She's exploratory at her age, you know. So what you need to do, create your child's perceptual code and teach everyone around you what the perceptual code is. So for example, um, the first time my children went for a holiday at my mom's place, my mom watches a lot of African magic. So I had to tell her, mom, can you promise me that all the time that children are going to be here, you are going to suspend your African magic? I say, if you don't give me a commitment, my children are not going to come. And she gave me a commitment, and all the while they were there, she didn't watch African magic, right? If you do not educate the people who are co-handlers with you, then you have no right to be upset when they treat your child anyhow, because they don't know who your child is, right? And it's in us. We all have it in us to treat children well, which is why if the president Buari's daughter or son comes to this church right now, all of us, we treat the child well, because we understand the daughter of who we are. So why do we treat our children less than we treat other people's children, right? So I think you should do that. On this side, any question? Thank you very much. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Um, thanks for this opportunity. We have a four-year, a four-year-old <coughs> daughter, and when, when I got married, I think um, myself and my wife we decided on a few things we want, and when, um, when we had. A baby, we decided on a few things and all that, and we've kept to that. There was a point I want to talk about habits, and I want to ask questions about that. When um, children goes to school, you know there are some few rules or some few things that we tend to teach our daughter, like um, picking up your nose with your with your hands and all that. And when they are back from school, you you see her or you see I exhibit something you've not that she hadn't seen in the house. And you ask, who did this in school? Oh, so, so, please, it is wrong, it is bad. You don't do this in the house. 
Then there was a time a visitor came to our house. Um, I think um, she came to see my wife. She brought a um, son. And when I came in, I think the light was out. I have never had my, my we have a generator in the house. When we want to own the generator, my daughter have never mentioned um, generator. So I saw the little boy, she was trying to, he was trying to kick start all those, um, I passed my neighbor generator. And I, I just looked at my wife, looked, used eye to motion her to see that I won't love this kind of attitude in the house. When she observes such, it turns to sticks. And I think um, immediately they left, maybe the next day or thereabout, light went out and she made mention of generator. And I said, you could see. So how, how does one um, uninstall things okay. or habits your pick? Your, your child is four. Should be four. Four. So what you have been doing is you have been giving her rules and regulation, don't and don't and don't. It never works. What you need to do, reinforce your child's identity. So, like I shared with you yesterday, I'm, you were at the meeting so I can recognize you. When my son does what is wrong, every opportunity must be used to, and I use the story of the lost son that we call prodigal son. The father reinforced his, reinstated his identity. So when your daughter, if you've been teaching your daughter, you are a queen, right? Um, or let's say you are royalty, that's a perceptual code, or you are a diplomat, you know, this is the way diplomats behave, this is the way diplomats eat, you make her eat like a diplomat, you make her dress like a diplomat, you make her walk and talk like a diplomat, right? So when she does something contra that contradicts a diplomat or a royalty, the first question is, who are you? Say, I'm a queen. Okay, so if you are a queen, do queens do things like this? She says, no. So why did you do it? Right? Um, so what will you do next time that someone does things like this? Because what, what, if I were you, I would have told her if you have created a perception like a royalty, I would have said, do royalties influence people or do people influence royalties? Say, no, royalties are the ones who influence people. So if they are the ones who influence people, it means that royalties will resist anything that seeks to influence them. Right? Because royalties don't talk in manner like this. So identity is actually the bone of contention. Once you reinforce your child's identity and your child knows who they are, right, there are things that will never happen, which is why what they do in Britain is they create cultures who treat the royalties to think and act like royalties. And once the children master that, there is nothing else anybody can do. Train up a child in the way he should go. When they are old, they will not depart from it, right? So identity is what you need to focus on. Not don't do this, don't do it. Because at that, you will that just create like 1,001 million rules. At the end of the day, your child won't remember. You will be confused. So I then, but I also suspect that your child's personality is creative convertible. And they are usually impressionable and easily influenced, you know, but identity is what you need to focus on. That's good. Thank you very much. Another person from that side. Okay. Here yeah, in front. And I come to the middle row. Okay, there's one at the back, back. Come to you. Okay. Uh, hello, sir. Yes, um, I wasn't here yesterday, but uh, I want to ask a question. Um, there's a teenage girl who's currently living with me. Our mother actually brought her to come live with me and told me, this girl is your daughter, so treat her like your daughter. But I've noticed that she, I don't, is it that maybe she doesn't really hear corrections or something like that? Because, you know, she does something and then you tell her it's not supposed to be done this way. And the next day, she's doing the same thing. And then you say, oh, no, don't do it this way. And then she's doing the same thing. And then she's doing the same thing. And I'm, I'm not used to violence so I just allow it slide but the thing is this is someone who is going to probably stay with me for a long time I intend to put her in school and really train her because that's what I want to do for her I actually like her a lot and I'm thinking how do I raise this girl how and many how many years has she spent with you she, she just came he just how old is she here. she's um 18 so at 18 she's been in a school in a culture that trained her for 18 years to become who she has become. Yes. So, so how long do you think it would take you to uninstall the that, pattern? That, that's what I'm asking. How do I uninstall? Because she so actually... It, it, it would take some time. So be patient. Okay. Right? It's, she's not going to just stop doing being who she has been. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. Right? So be patient with her. Give her like five years. 
But again, the question, the answer to your question was exactly what I told him. What is a perceptual code? What you need to do is reinforce his identity. And I, I mean, I identity. And I shared the Norway model yesterday. Norway realized that every time they took prisoners to prison and they beat them, you know, they went back to rob again. So they realized that capital punishment was not working. So what did they do? They abolished death sentence. They abolished life imprisonment. Maximum jail time became 22 years. So they said that if we treat human beings like animals, they will respond like animals. If we treat human beings like human beings, they will respond like human beings. But we treat human beings like royalties, they will respond like royalties in good measure, president shaking together. So what did they do? They changed the prison system to five-star hotel system. Wherein, when you come to the prison, they take you to your room, they welcome you, you go to your room, there is a bar, there is a gym, there is everything in the prison, right? So by spending six years in that environment, the people are unconsciously transformed to begin to act like royalties. So if the people came and they were rushing food, or after six years, they have slowed down. They are now eating properly, talking properly. That by the time they leave the prison system, they just go and get integrated to the society immediately. And that has led to a situation where they are now closing prisons because crime rate has dropped. Right? So time, patience. Right? It will take some time as newborn baby desire the systemic of the world that you may grow thereby. So the girl in your house is just a one day old baby or whatever. And you need to have that mentality. So it's not do this, do this, do this, do no, no. Show her a lot of love. Love can break the most ardent criminal. Right? Show her a lot of love. Right? Start telling her who she is. At 18, I mean, at 18 in any nation of the world, she's already an adult. So you want to re-disciple an adult. It's tougher to do that. But I mean, so if you say to her, you know, um, show her videos, show her who she's going to be. You are going to be like me in the future, a woman of class. Give her books, discuss it with her. Don't tell her, don't do this, don't do that. By understanding and mastering who she is, who she is will naturally dictate what she begins to do. The problem in Africa is that we are used to rules and regulation, which is why nobody changes. Every little thing will be banned. That's what federal government is doing. You ban Tramadol. Uh, Tramadol. The young people are now doing Benilin. You ban Benilin. You are not asking for root cause analysis. Your bad people say um, someone is load is bent. You are now abusing him that his load is bent on his head. But the guy is limping. And the guy is saying you are looking up. You should look down. My foundation is faulty. Right? So if you understand root cause analysis, why does she have the way she does? You can create an intervention that can solve that problem. Well, give it to mommy. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Still on what she's asking. You know, the children of nowadays, so many of them, they will tell you they are possessed. They are possessed. What does that mean? Uh, the children of nowadays, I've never heard that before. Uh, no, they, would, they are the one that will tell you that they are possessed. No, uh, no our their churches, behavior, their behavior, their behavior will, will show you that they are possessed. And when you go to prayer house, they will tell you they are possessed. Okay, prayer house told you that they are possessed. Uh, some okay. of them, you know. So I want to ask, how do we treat? Okay, children? now prayer house that told you they are possessed. What technology did they use to dictate that? Pos because let me tell you, we are all possessed. Depending on what has, your habit is a possession. That you are shouting, that you even have the ability to recognize someone is possessed is a function that you are also possessed. Because Africa, we just create spirits for everything. In, so if someone, and I said it yesterday, if a child sleeps and puts two legs on the wall, already your mind tells you she's a Mary. Says who? Nothing means anything except the meaning you're attached to it. Right? The people who are creating things to you that a child is possessed, how did they come about? I'm not saying a child cannot be possessed, but how did the child get come about that possession? In your presence. Right? So they will now tell you, go on fasting and never forget that those systems... Their expression is also found in creating more problems for you. Because if Africa gets to a level where we no longer believe in demons, there are ministries that will naturally collapse. That their continued existence is dependent on the fact that they can tell you that someone has a Mary. There are some demons. You need uh, 75. There are 75 people in your father's house destroying you and all those things. They find excellence. That's why you are plugged to them. 
That's why those demons never go. That's why I am surprised sometimes we want to start service, we give attention more to the devil than Jesus. So we begin to say, so let's say we're doing this service three times, three times we are going to bind the devil. So did the devil resurrect after the first service? You know, that's that it's it's an African thing. Which is why when you leave Africa and you leave, thank, thank God, I mean, we have a sister from Canada. The first thing that will disappear on your list when you travel abroad is that your prayer list, some funny, funny prayers you are praying will disappear. Because there are now scientific solutions for some of those things. Some of the children that Africa has classified as being possessed are actually genius, are being analyzed by illiterates. A woman told me in my class that she used to play a lot with water and they said that she was mommy water and they were casting my boy. Meanwhile, she could have been an oceanographer. She could have been a swimmer. Right? So, it is, I think you need to take that out of your mind. If a man being Christ is a brand new creature, right? And if you check, love believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. How do you see and what do you see? It's a function of the word of God inside of you. I cannot see my, I mean, so they are not telling, how come every time you take your child to prayer meeting, they are not saying this child is possessed with wealth. They are not saying this child is possessed with technology. They are not saying this child is possessed with, in fact, Many of people like Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates, if they were in Africa, they would have called them possessed children. And their invention would not have found the expression. How come Africa is always talking about witches flying, one witch fly, uh, you know, she be turned to a bed, uh, the bed turned to whatever. I said, if witches are going to meetings at night, let us light up and create 24 hour electricity and see if they will still go for meeting. You know, so please don't bother your head. And if they say your child is possessed, lay your hands on your child. By the name of Jesus, cast out whatever spirit, right? And insist what you want in your child. That's all. Stop running around. So don't have that impression that the children of nowadays, they are possessed. So a child dances, he dances, uh, uh, what's shaku, that? Shaku. shaku Shaku. You say it's the spirit of Shaku Shaku. He dances. There's no dance that is secular or spiritual. Dance is dance. Dance is dance. When David is dancing and they remove his clothes, if you were in Africa, you would have said, ah, spirit of nudity. Everything is a spirit here. What's wrong with us? When are you going to grow? So please, madam, right? Look at your child. Is a child of God came out of you. A, a, a good seed, a good tree does not produce bad fruit. If that child came out of you, it must be good. And if that child is possessed, you must have been possessed to have given back to a possessed child. Hey, that was deep. That was deep. Thank you very much for that. One more from this row, then I move to the middle. One more, yeah. Thank you, sir. Like yesterday, when we got home, myself and my husband, we rested. And we talked about things that we even slept at 2.30 a.m. Wow. Ah. What have you done to us? Yet, as the true African or the true Nigerian man, like you mentioned yesterday that your wife is your finance manager or finance officer. Yeah. I was trying to tell him that from now henceforth, because I've been telling him, like compulsive buyer, you buy just anything that is sold to you, anything that comes to you. You don't have savings. You, you are not saving for tomorrow. No investment, nothing. Money does not mean money in your pocket. End of your account is running zero. Okay. So I don't know how you can throw more lights on that for him to understand it and know that you should um, abolish that Africanism they, they, in him. Thank you, sir. They brought your case to the Assembly of the Righteous. Thank you for ans asking that question. Olga, did she lie against you? She did not lie. Now, you need to understand that your money is not your money. Your money belongs... You see, the mistake we make as Africans is the mistake our politicians are making. A governor becomes a governor and he thinks that the state's money is his money. No, you are a steward. Stewardship is not the same thing as ownership. Even though you are bringing in the money, you are a steward, custodian of that money. It's stewardship. That money is for your family. Your family is a nation. So if your family is a nation, the best person that can handle finance must be the mini coordinating minister of the economy of the family. It took me three years, three years of pain to learn it. I made money. Those years, three years, I was training banks. I was earning 350000 every day that I trained banks. But I was solving the problem of the world. My wife would warn me, would tell me, I would not listen. I say, what's wrong with you? You know, I would do another training. Blah, 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 blah. I was solving the problem of the world. But I thought I was financial intelligence. I was very stupid. But when we went to play cash for one-on-one, I saw my wife that she was making better financial decisions. And we, meanwhile, we'll be praying, God, every demon of her, whatever. Me, I was the demon. So I had to cast myself out and earn finance to my wife. 
The moment I handed it over to her, they placed me on a budget. My budget for the month will be 100,000. Once you finish 100,000, you can't ask for anything extra. And in that 100,000 is my fuel money, is my feeding money at work. So I became financially intelligent by force. So all the people I was sorting before, I couldn't sort them anymore because I was limited to 100,000. Right? So one day someone called me, you know, a girl, I didn't know her. She said that I've been to her church to minister. She said they just increased last school fees to 117,000. She said, sir, can you help me? Normally before, honestly, I would tell her, come to my office and write a check. Go and pay your school. I won't verify. But I was limited to 100,000. So everything I would do will be between, within 100,000. So I said, I'm sorry. I would have loved to help, but I can't help you now because I don't have. Then she said to me, she said, sir, uh, you, because of your influence, why don't you borrow so that when you have... Uh, I'm telling you a true life story. And you see, I told her, I said, I'm sorry, I can't help you because I don't have. Because let me tell you, your family members, they don't know that irrespective of the car you drive, there are times you don't even have money for, to, to fuel the car. They rate you in Africa by the brand of car that you drive, which is why I don't drive luxury cars anymore. Yeah, that, that's, that's one of the reasons I don't drive luxury cars. Yeah, because they will rate you. So the person that you should give 1,000 to feels insulted, not knowing that the 1,000 was from the 2,000 you have left. Right? So please, your money will not always flow. Oil will not always be available. Every nation that had oil had created an economy that's no longer dependent on oil, except Nigeria. Which is why the future is bleak. We keep getting into loans and debt. And it's the same way in your family. You will not always have the kind of money you have right now. God sends you money as a family oil so that you can create other sources or income generating assets. If you miss that opportunity, I, I interviewed a man in Surulay. I used to live in Surulay, Nikololu. I interviewed a man who was a gate man, just got a job as a gate man at 69. And I took instructions from him. And I asked him, sir, why are you getting a job as a gate man? He said, my son, money came many years ago. He said, I did not have the wisdom to save and invest. Say, my son, if there's any lesson you must learn from me, when money comes, say, money is a currency, right? It's a current. It always will flow where to the man who knows how to manage it and remultiply it. That was what that man told me. Which is why money usually flows from the poor to the rich. Because the poor, when money gets into their hand, they think of frivolities. I must show people. I must buy the next car. I must travel abroad. The rich, that's why your uncles who are rich, you call them stingy. They are not stingy, they are financially intelligent and they don't want your foolishness to mess up their own intelligence. Which is why they live on a budget. Rich, truly rich people are stingy. You call them, st they are not stingy, they are just financially intelligent because they didn't plan for you, so why should you appear to come and upset what they have planned? So my brother, for the sake of your children, for the sake of your future, if your wife is a better money manager, surrender yourself to her from today. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I will ask you when I see you. And you know, this goes all the way around. My husband is our own finance manager. Fantastic. So, it's both ways. In fact, if, she, if he surrenders himself, you will master what he has taught you. Because now, I'm a bet. In fact, my wife knows that I've mastered it so well, which was how I was sharing yesterday. So, I just say, sweetheart, please, can you give me 50K there? I say, is he alone? If he's alone, can you apply? So, and tell me when are you, you are going to pay back. Yeah, I, I've mastered it. So sometimes you say, uh -uh, does that mean you can't give me? I say, no, you taught me. I'm your product. So I'm a good student. So don't come and upset what you have installed. Right? So, yeah. please. That's a good one. Thank you very much. So the middle row, I'm coming to the back. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, my own question goes like this. Now that uh, you have bridged the gap of the whole this with the new generation, what are you recommending so that there won't be lapses in the margin of the old time and the present time? Take for example myself, I am an old man. My father loved me so much, he will come to my level to discuss all sorts of things with me. Do the younger people have that uh, regard for their uh, offshoots? 
That's my question. Okay, I think I've answered it with um, the young man who asked the question about his parents. Life is about balance. Life is about balance, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that your father came to your level, which means your father is just an exemption to the rule among the old generation. And I'm sure you must have passed it down to your children. You know, the best gift you can have is the best is the gift of a good father. A good man leaves inheritance for his children's children. You know, so if you have the gift of that father, you don't need to change anything. Just continue, right? But if you don't have that, some of you might need to adopt a father who has who looks like the future you want to become and get him to mentor you. That was what I did. I had to apply when my father died to Dr. Miles to mentor me, right? And that was the man who fathered me till he died, right? So I learned so much from him. I saw what it means to be a man. I learned what it means to be a secure man. I learned so much from him, right? So you can actually adopt a father, right? So it's about balance, right? Um, there's a lot of good from the older generation that we need to pick, but whatever is bad, let's discard it so that we can embrace the whole, the good ones. Yeah, thank you. Praise the Lord. I want to ask a question about parenting. I have two boys, and the way we are brought up, looking at the old generations, there's always a daylight among the children. You yeah, find it's always what? A daylight that you have okay. in your faith among the children that one thing we just want you to love this one more than the other. Yeah. Favorism, right? Favorism, yes. Yeah. So the, I have a lot of explanation on my first son, which he does certain things I thought the younger one will never do it. So if I give them punishment, I can easily overlook the punishment for the younger one. But when the, 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 the elderly one, it takes the, the mother's intervention to you to let me overlook at times. Because of my expectation, is high. He does certain things that I do expect from him. I see that one now trying to cripple him into, into me by being having a kind of favoritism. And when I give them punishments, I have a soft heart for the younger one, not, not like the elderly one. So how do I... Overcome that. Were you around I, yesterday? I wasn't around yesterday. So go and get the message. I did a and I mean, I did a couple of minutes on that. Right? What is happening is that you are destroying your first child. So very soon in the future, you realize that that first child is not doing well, and you will begin to run around for destiny recovery for firstborn. I saw those kind of meetings around Lagos and we went to investigate what was happening, and we realized that a lot of parents they use their firstborn as a specimen in the experimental lab of their parenting, and the specimen never survives. So by the time the second born comes, they've learned enough and they do it better, right? Your child is not the same as the second child. If your first born is Coco, that was what I shared yesterday, and your second born is corn, and your third born is rice, three different seeds, three different planting, three different caring, three different grooming. What it means is that your first born, it will require seven years for you to harvest him. But the second born, in three months, you have harvested corn. So, which means in four times in a year, you can harvest him. So, what we usually do is to begin to say, you con, I am so proud of you. You are making me proud. You now begin to use con to abuse cocoa. Meanwhile, by the tenet of the content of cocoa and the DNA of cocoa, cocoa is not meant to be harvested in one year or three months. So, by the time rice is done, ready in eight months, you now begin to say, hey, so you put a lot of pressure on the first one. Meanwhile, by the DNA code of that firstborn, it will only be ready in seven years. And by the seventh year, one harvest from him will mess up every harvest from the second and the third. So what you need to do, don't put unnecessary pressure on your firstborn, is a child must not be unfortunate for him to be the first to arrive. Let's break this down. God does not know about firstborn, secondborn, thirdborn. It was human invention. What God wanted is for a child to arrive on this planet. You were just a channel through which a canal, through which the child arrived in, on, on the planet Earth. Nothing more. Every other thing is addendum. So don't uh, say he's a firstborn. Firstborn doesn't mean he must be the leader of the family. If his destiny is a teacher and the secondborn's destiny is an IT person, IT person may earn more than a teacher. It doesn't mean the teacher has failed. He's fulfilled in his right. Fulfillment is what is more important. Let's stop generalizing children and comparing them based on what we call intelligence. Our intelligence is even subjective, which is why first in class is not first in life. If first in class, we're first in life, Buhari will not be your president, Dino Milai will not be in the house. Right? So let's step it down. That's why you need to master parenting. There's a book at the back that I recommend. If I commanded them to go and get out of the box parenting, it will solve all this problem for you. And I have a course um, that uh, I think it should be available tomorrow on my website. 
is 21 day parenting challenge what to do in 21 days to transform your parenting journey right you can take that course as well it will change your perspective about because a lot of us in africa we are damaging our firstborn in the name of you want him to turn out right you want to be the leader of what you want to be no 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 it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be right the nation we call israel today right is somebody else's family and jacob in that family who became the nation israel was not the first child right and even in the tribe of Israel, Judah was not the first son. He was Reuben. Right? And then um, um, Joseph was also in that family. He was not the first born. Let people find the expression based on what God has placed in them. Right? Ah, that's a good, great one. Please, somebody, okay. Somebody at the back has been raising their hand since. After her, please. Um, thank you, sir, for the information being passed to us. Um, I was not around yesterday. But um, I want to ask a question. Being a student of an early childhood uh, educationist, teaching, I want to ask a question about teaching, yeah. bringing down teaching to people. You know, when you are a teacher, you handle so many children. Yeah. You talk to different, from different backgrounds. Yeah. Now, I want you to marry this uh, statement from the Bible. It says, sparing a rod to spoil a child. What chapter of the Bible? <laughs> it's not in the Bible. Sparing the rod and spoil the child. Yes. No, there's not, it's not, that's an English saying. What is in the Bible is True. bound in the heart of a child, right? It's foolishness. The rod of correction. That's Bible. Sparing the rod, spoiling a child is not in the Bible. It's an English saying. Which was why I asked you where's the chapter so that we can read it. Okay, now um, when you come to that saying now, when you come down in school, yeah. you know, if you know that the, this, these um, teachers are being known with a rod, they are always with rod. Now when you're like in a school, you're correcting a child with rod, sometimes the parents don't like it. Yeah. And it tells so many things to the family, the place we find ourselves now because of the level of education now. Yeah. Now, when you are with these children and you want to correct them as a teacher, with all this, their, this thing, their character, different homes, different uh, backgrounds, please help. I think we should help the teachers in seeing how to correct these children with different learning from their homes. Okay, so how do, we, how do you think we should correct teachers who are also not doing their job? Should we also use rod on them? No. Because if we can use rod on children, we must use rod on teachers. Because we keep pretending in Africa as if it's only children that deserves rod. Our father's generation, they use rod on them. Our person, they use rod on them. All of them. Has Nigeria become a first world nation? So if the rod generation has produced an underdeveloped Africa, why are we still talking about rod? And the Bible saying the rod of correction there does not mean it's koboku. Rod to a people who have been colonized, who have been in slavery, will be koboku. Rod to a people who have never seen slavery will be communication. My mother used rod on me, a rod where her words, it was more potent than my father's rod. Right? So it comes back to not understanding who a child is. And our school system, educational system is faulty. Because our system is general, it generalizes children. There are children who will not find expression. There are children who must learn through play. I, I mean, I have my play therapist here. Zuriel, where are you? Zuriel teaches a lot of play. And people learn more in a class than even those of us who use slide. Because how did you learn when you say as simple as ABC? Is ABC simple? ABC is not simple. It was how you learned it. You used something to teach you A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Play. That's how it became simple. But maths, two times one, two, it was tough. Because they didn't use song. Right? So... I think teachers need to understand, and you see, I don't believe in Nigerian, the Nigerian curriculum that's producing our teachers because, in fact, I don't believe any teacher should be beating students. And I'll tell you why. To become a teacher in Finland, right, you must have a master's degree and you must even be on your PhD. Teachers are the highest paid in Finland. The people who cannot meet teachers' education, who cannot pass it, are the ones who go and drop out to go and study medicine and accounting. What is the cutoff for teachers' training college version in Nigeria? The people who score 100 over 400. Cutoff is usually 120, 120 over 400. They are the ones who go to college of education. 
So if people score 120 over 400, go to college and to become teachers, what right do they have to be beating children who are scoring 2 over 10? Which is why our College of Education, the first thing you notice is that it's producing teachers with low self-esteem. When I was in the university, let me crack a joke. I was a bad boy, or not born again. When the girls in our university, when they you do shakara for us, we will go to College of Education in a Kerekiti. Just by arriving at their gate and flaunting our ID card, a student from University of Adwek, the girls will rush us. Those are future teachers. So how can low self-esteem teacher produce LD children? And I gave all kinds of demonstration yesterday. Because you will judge a child wrongly when your esteem is not intact. I have raised children. I went to Ajegule, spent eight years of my life every Sunday evening with children who were the worst set of children, right, that they had in Ajegule. Some of them, I picked them from Brutals. I spent every Sunday evening with them, right, for eight, nine years of my life, every Sunday. I have seen the result today, right? Last month, we produced one of them it was the first PhD holder from that system, Ghani. Right? Miracle has finished his master's. I see all of them, some of them have become doctors. Right? All a child needs is someone who believes in him, not someone who is beating him. We lack love, which is why if you see the way the Holy Spirit treats us, this way God treats us, you will understand how to treat a child. God does not relate with us according to our iniquity. Have you ever related? If you have a good relationship with the Holy Spirit, has the Holy Spirit ever called you stupid? Has he ever called you foolish? He has never, even when you disobey him and you are breathing, he comes to you. That's why he's, he's called the teacher. The ultimate teacher is the Holy Spirit. If you want to know teaching, understand the Holy Spirit. The problem is that we are too, we are too weak and we don't even understand teaching. So if you have a child who asks questions too much, you will call him ITK. You label him. Say, well, you, you too know. You know, ITK, can you shut up there? Meanwhile, that's a guy who will challenge conventions and innovate. But our school system has no expression for him. You have a child who doesn't like to write notes, right? Then you say that he's lazy and you fail him. Is he writing notes that you need or understanding what you are teaching? So that's why I believe that there must be children who must be, who must be analyzed, who must be examined by oral communication. Which is why in developed countries, if you want to write the exam and you don't feel like it as a child, you can postpone it. Here, whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it, or you must write it. If you don't write it, no second chance for you. What kind of system is that? So my sister, in teaching children, right, observe Jesus. Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Play with children. Play. It's only in Africa that we get worried when a four-year-old cannot read. Where we get worried when a two-year-old cannot read uh, one to hundred. Why does he need one to hundred? Okay, you. You read one to hundred at, at age two. Who have you become? Are you Mark Zuckerberg? Are you Bill Gates? Are you Bill Clinton? Are you Obama? You are not even Buhari. Who have you become? I think we just love, we just love to get busy. Get, keep up with the Joneses. So you see a school, our school, British curriculum, American curriculum, even the people, if you are, parents are deceived. They don't even know what British and American curriculum is. So if you don't know something and they say it's here, you will believe it because you don't know what it is. What is British curriculum? What is American curriculum? Because you can't teach British curriculum here because the tools that is required to teach British curriculum, we don't have it. British curriculum, you must have a psychologist in your school. How many are in our schools? None. A professional counselor is there. You don't have it. You don't have the tools. So what are we talking about? So everyone is just deceiving everyone. So you pay Ivy school fees, you know, because, say, in our school, we do ballet. Ballet? So parents don't know what they are looking for. And that's why you are going, so you don't even know what to ask for. When, and I told them yesterday, your child's potential must determine the school he goes. If your child is showing musical ability, the first question you must ask when you get to the school, can I see your music lab? It's not maths, English teacher, no. When I, we're getting lesson teachers for my children, I interview the lesson teachers. So I took them off school lesson. Because I cannot understand what you want to teach from 2 to 4 that you couldn't teach from 8 to 2. Because you must pay, you must pay extra. If you really want the lesson, then don't make us pay. So I move my children out of school lesson because if you can't teach them to master it from eight to two, why should I keep my children from two to four again? So I move them out. So whenever I want to hire a lesson teacher, I'm the one to interview lesson teacher because not every master teacher can teach my son. 
you must be a creative math teacher to teach my son. You must be able to use games, you must be able to use songs to teach him. And not many people can do that. So if you understand parenting and teaching, you will understand that there are so multiple in the disciplinary approach to teaching. The first thing is, who is this child? Right? So you have visually oriented children. You have auditory children in your class. You have kinesthetics children. Yes, you want to teach them the same way. No. Right? So you become a creative educator. Unfortunately, our system doesn't have a system for, uh, place for creative because every lesson must end in 40 minutes. So even if a child has not mastered it, you must end it. End it. So what are we teaching? No wonder we can't invent. No wonder every our curriculum has passed. I mean, it's... it's, it's you, you don't even want to talk about it. It's obsolete. And that's what we are pregnant. So in our, in our mediocrity, we still even give our word first position. Even though when you cross that first position from Nigeria to UK, you realize that uh, nothing has been taught. Right? So, but you can be an exceptional teacher, which is why go online. There are so many teaching tools, teaching aids online. Learn about a child. You can create. I mean, I love to create content for children. Um, and that's one of the things I'm going to do in the days to come, you know, outside Nigeria, you know, creating content, you know, for children. That's what I love to do. And you, you can see that we can do a whole lot if we tap into the power within us. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you very much. Two more questions, one from the back. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Oh, my question is, um, somebody already asked something like that. Like, I have two boys, and my first child is always like, I love um, the brother more than him. And I, I, my question is just that, how do I correct that? Because he had that in his brain already. There was a time I was um, laying in his bed, and I saw a note, like, um, Mom, now I know that you love my brother more than me, so what I'll just do is kill myself. And you stay with my brother that you love. I was so I was crying that day. I called him. I plead to him. And but the thing is, I know every expression on him. Anytime I want to like discipline him for his brother and all that, he's always I'm always remembering that note. And I don't know. Am I am I supposed to stop disciplining him? What do like, you call discipline? You say we use discipline. I'm, I'm very worried. What do you call discipline? Okay, now. Maybe the brother will just come. The brother likes to report a lot. Yes. Mommy, that silver slapped me. Mommy, that silver said, uh, called me big head. Okay, good. Let's take that. That silver called me big head, he slapped me. What's your response? So, most of the time, I'm always like, stand up, beat him back. <laughs> you did, your, you did, did you question him? So yes. What, yes. You, what you are doing is... I questioned him. That and most of the time, it's always like, hey, I, I told him not to step on this place. He stepped on it. And... I, I told you I don't want beating in this house. But you beat him. <laughs> so you are teaching a child to lie. Do as I do. Do as I say. Don't do as I do. If you don't want beating in your house, stop beating totally. Then you will not be. Your child is modeling you to undo his younger one. Because that's what you are doing. You beat him to beat the next one. Okay. Because I need beating. Like, I want to use their father as an example. The father always tell me something. There was a time he was telling me, like, all his friends, he, he was born in um, Ilasa. He said all his friends joined secret cults when they were in school, even those that didn't go to school. It was only one that did not join. It was not like, it's just because of his father, that his father always beat him. That his father, as in, the man beat him. So it was the beating had, that didn't make him join secret cult. That was this, that was this, that was, that was what he told me. I can show you 10 people who were beaten and the beating, they joined secret cult. So you can see how we, so that became a rule now. So he passed, part of the inheritance was beaten. My sister, you need to go back home and apologize to that boy. You have trained him to beat and he has perfected the art of beating. You should reward him for being a good disciple of you. Because the boy is a perfect representation of you. It's an award he requires, not a beating. For modeling you so well that he has perfected how to beat the younger one. Because that was what you did to him. So please, show these children love. Were you around yesterday? Right? Show your children a lot of love. That's what they need. Right? A child... Uh, this is emotional for me. 
when the, your child was born and you held that child in your hand, what was your first expression? You were excited. As you held that boy in your hand, did you tell him, you, when you clock five, they slap, I will slap you. When you clock seven, ah, ah, I will buy pancare, eh? You did not, so how did you change all of a sudden? What happened to you is that you were excited about the birth of a child, even though you lacked the knowledge to parent a child. Because you now became upset at a child living out his childhood. So when your child was not sitting, you were worried. Ha -ha. You saw that people's children at a, a four months, they were sitting. When he began to sit, you were worried. He's not crawling. So at seven months, he began to crawl. When he was crawling, you were worried he's not standing. But when he, when you, he was going to stand, you did not factor the cost of standing. Because the moment your child can stand and run, it means that your house can no longer be tidy. He will pull everything down. He will pull whatever, your phone. He will, and you didn't factor that. And if you had factored that, the next thing you should do is, how must we arrange our house so that it doesn't destroy things? So you put things at a particular height where his hand cannot touch. You didn't do that. Then you are beating him for spoiling your charger, for spoiling your phone. You, you, should, not, you should beat yourself for your negligence at putting the right things in the wrong places. So we need to understand the developmental stages of a child and let our children be children. Instead of, that's why we say that you cannot teach a child thinking like an adult. In fact, you cannot be a child's teacher without first of all becoming their student. If you become a child's student, you will know how to relate with a child. Which means, go back to when you were a child. Play the games you played with them. I mean, you played as a child. Play with your children. And that you will yell less. You will shout less. You will have enough peace in your house. You will not need to beat. Right? My son was having a discussion. He said, he said I know my, no, my, it was my daughter. He said, I know my father will not beat me. He will talk to me about what I've done wrong. Because everything you do to your children, you are creating memories. What memories will they have of you when they grow old? A mem I mean, my foster father, Dr. Miles, taught me that praise, he said to me, he said, praise, your child must not attach pain to your hand. He must attach warmth and love to your hand. So he said to me that when he wants to, whenever he wants to beat his children for the offense that require beating, that he has a basketball um, table tennis bat. You know, he has a pad. So he beats his children in his bum bum. He says, and it's very on rare occasion. And I to internalize that. Some of you, your hand is a source of pain to your child. You slap a child, you beat a child, you use a bell. What has he done? What have you done? Ah, ah. Like your bad people. They say, um, needle is missing. You went to call Shongu. The cause you went to call is bigger than what is missing. Because many of us are transferring aggression. Why you are beating your child is not what your child has done. No. It's the pain, maybe from your place of work. Maybe your boss talked to you. You wish your madam and you are a man. Your madam talked to you and say you are a useless man. And you wish you could actually slap her, but you couldn't. So naturally, you are looking for the next person to inflict that. And your child becomes the recipient of your pain. Please, let the pain stop in you. Let children grow up normally. Let's create an environment fit for our children to live and to thrive. Thank you. Last question. Thank you very much. That's the last question. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the best teaching I've heard in a very, very, very long time. I've not been to church in a long time, so thanks to my friend that brought me today. Uh, my question here is, why do women find it difficult to transfer love to another person's child? I've had these issues with my neighbors, and when they want to be their helps, like, they beat them like they're not human beings. And it's not like it's one person, too. Like, I've seen, I've been to 23 states in Nigeria. And in all the places I've been to, I see the same thing reoccurring. Mostly in the women. They hit these kids because they're not their children. Like, they're animals. Why do you think they find it difficult transferring that same love from their children to their domestic Thank family? you very much. You've asked a fantastic question, which I answered yesterday. If you have a house help, and you are coming to church, and I can identify your house from your children, you are not a Christian. You are not. You are not. You are not a believer in Christ. You are not. Because I don't know how to do it. Ask everyone who has lived in my house. What I eat is what I eat. What I treat, the way my treatment is the way I treat them. I can't, I don't know how to live a dual life. If you have 
another life than the life, then you are not a believer. You are a hypocrite. You are pretending. If And I said to people, never hire a house help if you are not going to adopt that house help as your child. Because your house help, you may be the last hope of that girl living a good life. And you now beat them. Some of you, you overwork these girls. Are you aware that if you hire a house that is less than 18 in Nigeria, it's a criminal offense. Are you aware? In fact, it's child, child trafficking. So if your house is less than 18, you better adopt her. Number two, I do not believe many of us need house helps. We use house help because it's cheap labor. Because, I mean, madam lives in Canada. Can, what's the cost of hiring a house help in Canada? It's expensive. You can't afford it. So let's say in Nigeria now, government now says the minimum wage for a house help is 150000 per month. How many of you will see hire house help? Because many of you, you are hiring a girl who has been totally messed up. And you now expect her, and you pay her, pay not. In fact, you don't pay her directly, you pay her madam. And madam never gives her. That girl is bitter. You now expect her to treat, treat your home right, make your home way. No, no, no. The real house help that can treat your home right, pay me. Hire me as your house help. Pay me a million naira per month and see a house help. And see the way I would run your home for you. Right, but we hire cheap labor. A girl messed up. Maybe her father had raped her. Seven men had gang raped her from the village. She now made it to your house. Which your house, you say, is a Christian home. So she made it to heaven and you are giving her a hellfire treatment. You must be an L accreditation officer. And if you do that, don't call on God because the love of God is not in you. Who you are is what you output per time. It means you don't love humanity. If you love humanity, you will treat the next man like yourself. So guys, we can do better. How much does it cost to dress up these girls? Do you know what dressing her up does to her esteem? To clean her up? Take her to the salon. Watch her. Let her look like a human being. Let her parents see her and not even be able to identify her. Send her to school. Let a girl graduate from your house as your house help and point and write a story of how she moved from house help to become a medical doctor through you. You have a Jesus she's going to see. Don't present a false Jesus to her. Don't pretend. Don't masquerade devil as Jesus to her. And that's why many of those girls go to join a cultic group and whatever and they become weaker to your children because you don't treat them well. So please, I thank you for that question. And I think it's a challenge. If you have a house help here, you need to make a commitment. In fact, we need to begin to check them as they come to church. If we can still recognize their house help after two years, let us ban them from this church. Because they are misrepresenting Jesus Christ. That's and if you have maltreated your house help, go back home and apologize to her. Don't tell me that you are paying her. How much are you paying her? How much are you paying her? She's a human being for crying out loud. My pain is that some of you, you came from a humble background. And the, I don't know why the people from humble background are the ones who are the most wicked when they don't have a bit of money. You forget who you used to be. I can't forget I sold Zobo in front of churches in this Lagos. I painted houses, 500 naira for people in this Lagos. I did all kinds of minor jobs. Can I ever forget? I earned 15,000 naira my first job in Lagos. I can't forget. That's why I can't treat people anyhow. My office has a flat structure. I sit in their office. We do things together. We eat together. You know, if you see me jest with the office cleaner, you would think it's something else because I never forget where I'm coming from. It's the grace of God that has brought me here. I must not forget. He says, bless the Lord of my soul. Forget not his benefits. Some of you, you forget too quickly. Which is why God has never lifted you beyond where you are. Because the literally has lifted you an embarrassment to him and you are a pain to other people. If God has set you free, it's to set other people free, not to put them in your bondage. Africa love for people to worship you. You think that everyone must owe you. They don't owe you. It's a privilege to add value to their lives. Let us grow up. Let us grow up. All my children in Nigeria, I told them, I said, I'm not waiting for you to give me anything. I don't need anything from you. It's a privilege. And thank God I went to work for them because everything I did for them is what has paid off for me right now. It's a privilege. In fact, I didn't know we were going to... I, I wrote an article this morning, you know, how I almost lost my calling to 15,000 salary. Right? So I had to do it. It's called the sacrifice of love. 
Sacrifice of praise is a sacrifice. Love is not about what you stand to get, it's about what you start to give. And it's actually found when you can do something for someone who cannot pay you back. Someone you have done something for something, he's not paying you, he's not paying you back, he says he's ungrateful. Excuse me? Who gave you your breath? Who gave you your money? You came here with nothing? So let's wake up, please, and add value to humanity. Let's heal the world as Christians and not contribute to their pain. Go back home, beg that girl, take her tomorrow shopping, you know, she clean our wardrobe up, give her a proper room, let her become like your daughter. Let her speak Queen's English. Because if you don't train her, she will undo everything you're doing. Let that girl grow. Be the Jesus to her. And disciple her and set her free. Everybody who came to Jesus, they were made at the end of the day. Make your house up. Move them from house up to daughters. Thank you. This is so perfect. So on point. And I pray that the Lord will help us to do the needful in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor has a question. Somebody's question, okay. But I think it's important. And in case you can't do what praise just recommended, then you don't need a house help. That's just right. do the work yourself. That's right. But somebody is saying is man, I will like get money to two shells get help. Then you don't need house help. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, someone asked this question and uh, it's something I can answer, but I think I, I will want you to answer that. that yesterday you said that, uh, and I've preached that over and over again, that if your husband, your wife doesn't know what you earn, blah, 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 I mean, your, your, your husband or wife, they don't know what each other earns, and it's like uh, finances is run like a secret cult. Yeah. Somebody is now saying that, what do I do because I know my wife is reckless, and I will never allow her to know because once she knows I'm in trouble, She's going to come with all kinds of these and this, and it's like that's going to cause more conflict than the peace I've generated by running a secret court model. Okay, so what um, it's very simple. Um, if you have a wife who is a spendthrift, um, it must have been a pattern she picked up from where she's coming from. So she's a good ambassador of the parents that produced her. Um, the only problem is that how can she be spending the money she's not generated? You know, which is what is happening in Nigeria. There are states generating nothing. Yet sharing from what the national post. There are states who are against beer, for example, but they are sharing from the money that beer is producing. I thought by their religion they should reject the money from beer, but they are collecting it, right? You are not in a family to be a liability to the family. You are here as an asset, which is why everyone that is a that is a, that is not that is able in the family must be able to generate an income. Now, so in Nigeria, they have the federation account. They have the internally generated revenue of every state to say that this is what you are generating. So if you are spending more than you are earning as a wife, what you are doing is a prophecy to your future that in your future, you will still need a job at, 40, at 60. You will still need to get a job at 70. It means you are saying bye-bye to financial freedom and wealth. So if I wear you as a husband, you need to sell to her a vision of a future and allow her choose. So if I were you, I would take a drive around Lagos to Banana Island, show her all the houses there. I would drive her to VGC. I would show her, I would drive her to Shonibara Estate. Then I would take her out of the country, take her to Dubai, show her all those things. Ask her, do you want this kind of future? She says, yes. What do you think we need to do to be able to afford this kind of houses. If she's reasonable, and if you marry a human being, because some people didn't marry a human being. If it was a human being who married, ah, she'll begin, this, is, this life is good though. Ah, so it means, uh, you know, maybe what we need to begin to do is to begin to save towards it. So what do you think we need to begin to save to be able to afford this life in 10 years? Right? So what must we cut off right now? So can we agree that 60% of our earning we go into investment so that we can create this future Why we live on 40%. Okay? And to achieve this, can we place ourselves on a budget so that we know what accrues to everyone's portfolio per month and we will stay within that limit? Because you have shown her a vision. Right? She would agree. So if what accrues to her is 60,000, what accrues to you is 60,000, you can even make it, you know, balance so that nobody's cheating anybody. So from her 60,000, if she wants, she, she knows that. That was what my wife did to me. You are limited to your budget, in your portfolio. 
So if you now want to spend extra, it's your business. But so what we do is my wife created what she called an escrow account. Escrow account is the account for your future. The money that enters escrow account cannot go out. It only goes out in the direction of assets. So even if you are sick, you cannot put money from escrow account because it's money for the future. If someone is dying, you need to help. You cannot put money from because it's saved away from you. Our escrow account has no ATM. It has nothing. It's only transferred in direction of the fund manager. Right? And that saved my life because, in fact, initially it was tough because my wife just mopped all the money. I will now be seeing ah, like 15000 in my account. Hi. And me, I love to be seeing money. In the, you know, it's bad behavior to like to be seeing money. Right? My wife just saved away from me and it did help. Right? So, the Bible says there is much treasure in the teal of a wise man, but the foolish spended it all. A definition of a foolish person is someone who spends everything that comes in. So, if you show her that scripture, don't call her a fool, but she will know whether she's a fool or not. Which is why you cannot catch me by as you be. I don't do it. I can't do it. I don't do as you be. I don't do as you be. I don't do anything. And because if I keep buying Asher, I one year I saw how much I say by not buying Asher, I was amazed. Right? I saw how much I say by not going to eat trees. I saw how much I saved by cooking my food for lunch to work. I saw how much I was saving because all this buy mama put buy this thing. If you don't know all this one year like that, That's I stopped drinking coke. If I saw how much I cook, I stopped coke. Okay. I stopped coke. You can you see me around with my water. I I buy my blender, I juice everything I need to juice now. Right? I live healthy. Now, when I burn coke, that year, what I would have spent on my budget for coke was over 280000 that I saved. Meanwhile, what is coke doing to my body? Damage. It's killing me softly. So, I saved the money. And I, and I was seeing it. So, the moment I saw it, I sold it to my wife. My wife also stopped coke. The children stopped fizzy drinks. We started doing juices and smoothies. And our health became... In fact, when we introduced that, our children didn't go to the hospital for one year that we started it. So, guys, many of the things you are spending are things that you can do. That, in fact, I learned that there is a difference between your want and your need. When you are thirsty, coke is a want. The need is water. That's why after drinking coke, you are still thirsty. So, why are you not going for want when what you need is water? Right? So you need to, once you master that, and you see, when you are financially intelligent, you will survive in any nation of the world. You will survive. Many of our people are spending, some people are driving their future now. They are driving a car they are not qualified for. They are going for vacation they are not qualified for. There is no certificate of, we don't have summer in Nigeria, we don't have winter in Nigeria, so there is no summer. So don't put yourself in any pressure. We are going for summer. Which summer are you going for? We are permanently on summer. If you want to go for, there was a year we didn't have, I mean, we had done investment, we didn't have money to go abroad. Right? So I told them, there's a place I go to retreat, Atikan Beach Resort. It's 10 minutes from Aja. I took them there, we went there, we danced, we enjoyed ourselves, came back home. Your children don't know the difference. Right? We enjoyed ourselves. We saved money. There is no certificate for us to arrive UK, for us to arrive US, for us to arrive, you know, we do it as if we are going to heaven. You have to lie to go. Then you go, it's not as if you are going to White House or you are going to where power blocks are. You are going to take pictures to impress the people who have low self-esteem like you. To so now congratulate you that big boy, what is big boy for traveling abroad? To go and do nothing. Right, guys? It's identity crisis. Right? There's a, your level per time. Understand your level. Don't put yourself under any pressure to do anything and sell your vision, all these things you are talking about should have been premarital counseling. Set to it before marriage so that you don't bring a spendthrift into your family. If she had been a spendthrift, she, it may have been enough to disqualify her from being your wife. Right? Because it's a fun function of you are about to marry someone who is foolish, who is going to spend everything. That's what the Bible says. It's not me. There's much treasure in the house of a foolish, in the house of a wise man. A foolish spended it all. That's the definition of a fool. And a foolish man is the one who sees evil and still goes ahead. A wise man sees evil and hides himself. So there are a combination. It's a parable of two fools. Plus the person who proposed and the person who accepted the proposal 
Both of them are the same. Two plus two. So don't complain about what you are permitted. So guys, go sell the vision to your spouse, right? And move on. And please, women, I need to beg you. And men, if you are expense thrift, there's no glory in it. Right? You are not earning yet, you are spending. Right? If in accounting, it means your account is going to hit red. It means you are going to be bankrupt. It's only a function of time. Right? It's, don't, I mean, I don't have friends who wear brands. I love to wear brands, but I don't have friends who would see that and say, ah, what brand are you wearing? What brand are you wearing? The good thing is that God has been with a good body. Whatever I wear sits well. My body. When I was buying fairly used, nobody knew. In fact, people were asking me, ah, how can... It's not a function of the brand. It's a function of my body. It sits well. I know what to wear, and it's fine. You can't catch my wardrobe. There will never be a day that my wardrobe will be richer than my library. It will never happen. It will n- I traveled abroad, came back. My wife was asking me, what did you bring? Blah, 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 blah. My box was full of books. You say, you may... I don't, I don't buy clothes for myself. It's books. It's books. Because if I dress my mind, my mind will manufacture what I would have bought with my money. And that's the way we should live. It's not what you wear that makes you a royalty. It's who you are that should make what you wear royal. Focus on yourself and build yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. A round of applause for Dr. Prince Fouwe. Can we just keep clapping? That was beautiful, awesome, magnificent. I'm sure we learned something today. And if you were here yesterday, I'm sure you also learned. Now, let me please sit down. Thank you so much. Let me make this one or two announcements. I believe it's what our time, right? Because I know we've gone uh, beyond uh, the closing time, but I think it's worth it. Despite the rain, we thank God we made it here today. Glory to God. Please, um, we had an ass- assessment form which uh, a trainer used for us yesterday. So, just as we share the grace now, if you are married, all married men, please, you need to wait behind. Because we just need to uh, walk and talk for a few minutes, just about five minutes or thereabout. And then uh, I want the assessment form to be given to you. And I'll give one to you. You also give to your spouse at home. We need you to work on that, you know, uh, personally. And then you just need to be true to yourself. All right? So we're going to do that as we just close the service. All the married men, just wait to my right hand side. Amen? And then if you want to deny your wife, go. You understand? Like the...